Welcome to the tutorial video series for Georgia Child Care Administrative and Payment System, or Georgia CAPS. In this video, we will guide you through the sections of the application to enroll or renew your participation in the Georgia CAPS program. The Georgia CAPS Provider Portal aims to automate the application submission and review process, optimizing the provider experience in CAPS. Let's see how you can get started with the enrollment process. Log into the provider portal and navigate to your provider dashboard. Before you begin, it's important to note that the authorized signer must complete the enrollment renewal application. An authorized signer is a person that is given the right to sign documents on behalf of a company or business. This authority usually appears in the Articles of Incorporation, bylaws, or company business agreement. The authorized signer is listed when searching for the business on the Georgia Secretary of State website. Remember, all licensed CAPS providers must participate in Quality Rated. Before you begin your enrollment application, first complete Step 1 on Quality Rated's website. You can watch the Provider Dashboard tutorial video to learn more. If you are submitting the application for the first time, you will see the Start Enrollment button on your dashboard. If you need to renew your enrollment, you will see the Renewal button. Select Start Enrollment or Renewal to initiate the submission process. Please note that the enrollment application varies slightly for the licensed, informal, and exempt provider types. We will discuss the differences as we proceed. After you initiate the enrollment or renewal process, you will be taken to the Provider Enrollment page. Let's look at the different sections of the application. First, you will see Instructions. These instructions provide information about participation criteria. Select Save and Next to go to the next step. If you do not want to proceed, select Cancel. To return to your dashboard, select Exit. In the next section, you will see information specific to your facility. The personal details and site address details will be auto-populated. Scroll down to the CAPS Program Contact section. You can check the box to populate the mailing address of the facility if it is the same as the CAPS Program Contact mailing address. The CAPS Program Contact is the primary contact that the CAPS team will reach out to for CAPS Program topics. Scroll down further to the CAPS Billing Contact Information section. If the CAPS Billing Contact is the same as the Program Contact, check the box to populate the information from the CAPS Program Contact section. If the Billing Contact is not the same person, enter the Billing Contact information. You will also need to add at least one person to the Board Member Principal section. If you are a Family Child Care Learning Home or an informal provider, enter your name here. Corporations or partnerships should enter the names of Board Members. Other organizations such as Government Owned should enter the names of persons who are legally responsible for the administration of the organization. Select the Plus Add Board Members Principals button to enter the names and contact information. If a Board Member Principal needs to delegate authority to persons not listed in the Board Member Principal section so that they can conduct business that is associated with the CAPS program, enter the name of this person in the Authorized Signer section. Then, go back to the Board Member Principal section to send the Delegation of Authority form to the board member principal via email for completion. Once you have added the board member principal and authorized signer details, they will be displayed under the respective provider information sections. Scroll down and select Save and Next to continue. The provider information section will vary for the exempt and informal providers. An exempt provider must enter the names and identifying information about staff employed in their facility. An informal provider must enter the names of all people 17 years of age and older who live in the household. These people will need to submit a criminal background check application in the Koala system. 
An important thing to note here is the Previous button. Selecting this button will take you to the previous step. This button will be available on each of the subsequent steps in the enrollment application process. In the next section, licensed or exempt providers will enter their published rates when enrolling for the first time. Enter the published rates as applicable and select Save and Next. If the provider is renewing their application, the most recently approved rates will display. If these rates have changed, the provider can update the rate information. Informal providers are paid the CAP State Maximum Reimbursement Rate, which the provider will see displayed. The informal provider cannot edit rates in the application. Please note that based on current policy, the ability to update rates for licensed and exempt providers during the renewal process may not be enabled for the provider. The next section for licensed providers is the Quality Rated section. As a licensed provider, you must be star rated or in CAPS Quality Rated Probationary Status or Provisional Status. In the Quality Rated section, you'll be able to review your QR rating. If you are not in a Quality Rated Status but meet the criteria for Provisional or Probationary Status, you will see the links to complete a Memorandum of Understanding. MOU, if you have applied for a quality rated account. If you have not applied for a quality rated account, you will be redirected to the quality rated program to register for an account. Once registered, you can return to Georgia CAPS and complete the enrollment process. Select Save and Next to proceed. If you are an informal provider or exempt provider, you will not see the Quality Rated section, since those provider types do not participate in the Quality Rated program. For informal providers, this section will be replaced with the Eligibility section. In this section, you'll need to review and agree to specific policy and documentation requirements. Neither of these sections is applicable for the exempt provider. The next section displays the provisions of the Child Care Provider Agreement. Be sure to review these provisions carefully. Enter the signature and a date. Select Save and Next to move forward. In the next section, enter your TIN information. In the name field, enter the legal name of the organization or the name under which the provider pays taxes. Enter a doing business name, if applicable. You should enter either a Social Security number or an employer identification number not both. The number entered must be the number you registered with the Internal Revenue Service for tax identification. Each year you will receive a 1099 form for tax purposes. You can give your consent to receive it electronically in the Georgia CAP system. If not, it will be mailed to you. Your provider information will be pre-populated, but you'll need to add your bank details when you initially enroll. If you are renewing, this information will be pre-populated, but you will have the ability to edit this information if needed. Scroll down and mark the Consent Statements checkboxes. Save and Next to go to the next step. Based on your provider type, you'll need to upload documents. The system will scan the documents to determine whether they are satisfactory or unsatisfactory. You may receive a message that the document is unsatisfactory. This may occur if the document is not legible or for other reasons. If you feel the document is correct, you can proceed with the application, even if the document shows an unsatisfactory status. Documents will be reviewed by the CAPS team and returned for resubmission if needed. In the next section, you will need to provide your W-9 details and certify the information provided is true. Select Save and Next to go to the next step. As a licensed provider, you must complete an electronically signed Form 704. This form is not applicable to either informal or exempt providers. The last step in the enrollment process is to review and submit your application. Ensure all the details you have provided are accurate. Sign the acknowledgement and select Submit. You will see a Submitted Successfully message on the next screen. If you are enrolling in CAPS for the first time or had a break in service, 
you will need to complete a CAPS new provider orientation training. If you are a renewing participant, you do not need to complete the orientation training. You can select the Go to Trainings button to register for your orientation training. This concludes the application enrollment tutorial video. Thanks for watching.